How true, how true, how true, right? I'm telling you what, how true. Like, so, hey, we know uh, in this life, man, we are trying to juggle a lot of things. But it, it, it comes down to uh, uh, prioritizing, pri- prioritizing. And there's a, there's a key verse that I just want to just share is Matthew 6, It says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things shall be added unto you. What happens is we juggle, we're trying to juggle all the other things, everything in our life, and, and God has an order. Put him first, prioritize God, right? And God then, you know, marriage, family, kids, and then, and then job, right? And, but we try to juggle everything, job, money, trying to do this, and we try to go after everything, and then we say, we'll maybe fit God in, but God's got to be first. And so what happens is we got it out of order, and then if, and eventually your life comes crashing down because God has, wasn't first, right? Because you didn't desire to seek first the kingdom of God. And, and so, listen, it happens to us all. I came across this, uh, this, this quote, this nugget, uh, because in the midst of it, when life is crashing or we're juggling and we make mistakes, right, uh, really, uh, it's okay. Like, we are human beings. But what happens, what I want you to realize this, is that making mistakes is better than faking perfection. I'm going to say that again. Making mistakes in life is better than faking projection, perfection. Now, I'm not saying it has a license to sin and go live how it is, because your life will crash, right? If you or keep making mistakes, like, you got to find out what's the answer to that. Why are you continuing to fail why are you continuing to crash maybe you're 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 stuck like Jeff there's an addiction going on in your life and you don't know how to get out but God knows the way out so we can make mistakes I'd rather make mistakes trying seeking God learning more about God than trying to put on a false front I'm trying trying to wear a mask trying trying to say hey this is me look at me and really on the inside right as Jeff said you're carrying a lot of shame you're carrying a lot of hurt. But here's the good news, that God is there with you. Like God says, God said, I'm going to send my son down. Like God sent his son Jesus to live as a human being, to understand our infirmities, our pain. The Bible says that Jesus was a man that understand everything we go on. Yeah, man, Jesus was tempted, right, with sexual things, right? He had to fight lust. What? Jesus, yeah. Like, Jesus was tempted, right, with everything. He had to learn how to say no to food. He had to learn how, like, he had to, say, he had to learn to control his anger. Like, Jesus was a man, right, that was, uh, because he was half God, half human, 100% God, 100% human, right? He was God in the flesh. And so Jesus had to learn, so he knows what you're going through. And so there is a way out. Jesus came to show us how to live. He came to show us the way to the Father. Matter of fact, the Bible says that Jesus' sole reason was coming to show us the love of the Father. Right? So don't put on this, this perfection thing. Right? Because we all got, because you can't really, you know, you can fool somebody once or twice. Maybe you can fool some people a little bit, but you really, at the end of the day, you know, true colors will show up. People will know. Right? And, and the thing is, but the thing is surrender. Say, hey, God, Help me. If you do not know the way out, right, find God. Find somebody that, that's here. I remember uh, going through a period in my life uh, with the pastor uh, who's a mentor, pastor who's a father figure. I texted him this morning, thank you for being a father, pastor, mentor in my life. And I was going through some things. We were young. We had a couple of kids. And I'm trying to climb the ministry ladder. I'm trying to be the best youth pastor in the whole area, right? And I'm trying to achieve and I'm trying to balance this and, uh, you know, doing this and doing that. And, and uh, hit, hit some, I was hitting some roadblocks, some lids in my life. And, and, and so I just couldn't seem to forgive myself. Some of the things that, that, that I had to deal with. And my pastor said this. He says, Larry, you're in a hole right now. And uh, he goes, you just keep trying to climb out. But you can't climb out by yourself. Right? You need somebody to help you. And guess what? I'm going to jump into the hole with you. Because I've been in this hole. And I want you just to follow me because I know the way out. Like, there are people that know the way, have success, and it's through seeking first the kingdom of God, right? Seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteous way of living, right? 
and, and then everything. God wants to bless you financially. He wants to bless you with health. He wants you, but he wants you to put him first, right? And we keep trying to do it our way, right? the wrong way. And we, and we keep trying to find peace, but that's not going to find you peace until you surrender to the Prince of Peace and, and, and allow it. We could be Christians and still be struggling because we don't know what the Word of God says, how to, how to live successfully. So, right, let's not put on a big old fake front. If you're hurting, hey, come on, we want to do life with you. We want to get there. We want to help you, right? There's, the, the first message we preached in this church was no perfect people allowed. And we said from the beginning, hey, we preached a four-week series. First time, the first four month I preached, no perfect people allowed, including these pastors. And we don't pretend to have all the answers, all right? And we're going to mess up. But, because, and, but if you're perfect, please leave because we don't want you to mess up our, 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 our problem, church. All right? Because coming here with a problem is okay. Having a problem is not a problem. Hello? Having a problem is not a problem. But guess what? You just don't stay stuck, right? There's a way out, right? Don't kind of live, well, it's okay. No, no. God wants you to live the champion life. He wants you to succeed. He wants you to press on. Do we say it every, we're going to say this declaration at the end. I'm deeply blessed. I'm highly favored. I'm unconditionally loved. I'm filled with divine purpose, that you have a purpose, and God wants to use us men. He wants to use us Men, because this is for, for men, but it's also for all of us. There are some ways that we can learn. Like Jeff said, hey, I, I'm discovering my purpose. I've discovered that purpose comes out of your pain or out of your, your gifting. Right? And in the, in the midst of that. So listen, if you've experienced some pain in life, maybe that's a way you can help other people and, and devise, the, devise the purpose of God. But we all have a divine purpose. So I look at this story of, the, of, the, of Joseph. He was the father of Jesus, right? He was the father, the earthly father of Jesus. And, and, and he, he got this news, right? This is in Matthew 1, uh, 18 through 25. It says, uh, this is how the birth of Jesus came about. Uh, Jesus' mom, Mary, was promised, right? She was engaged or betrothed. Uh, to be the wife of Joseph. She was a virgin, but became pregnant through the power of the Holy Spirit. And then, right, Joseph, right, her fiance, he was a good man. He was a righteous man. He was a man of integrity, right? And he didn't want to disgrace her when he learned that she was pregnant. He secretly planned to break up the engagement. Can you imagine that? Hey, Joe. Hey, baby. Um, I'm pregnant. It's by God, right? Yeah, oh, okay, I'm going to believe that one, right? You know, you know what I mean? Like, I, and, 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 and so he was like saying, this woman's lying to me. Now, Mary could have been stoned for, for, for being, uh, having a, a, a baby or being pregnant out of wedlock. And Joseph knew that. So Joseph, it, it says that he was a righteous man or a man full of integrity, right? And that the integrity inside of him didn't want to disgrace her. And so he was willing to divorce her privately, and then what happened is he went to sleep, and an angel, he had a dream, and, 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 and the dream, the angel spoke to him, listen, take this woman to be your wife. She is not lying. She is pregnant with the Son of God, and you will call him Jesus. And he will save mankind from his sins. So guess what? He had this, okay, this news right here. And then all of a sudden he gets this news like, okay, it's some supernatural news. Right? And I think he needed that because God needed to encourage him. Sometimes when you get in a tent, when you come to a, a refresh revival, when you come to a prayer team moment, guess what? Something supernatural happens. You get a word from God. And, and maybe that's the situation where you are. And man, like maybe, maybe you're not seeking God enough. Right? Maybe you're not putting yourself in that environment to have a word supernatural. Maybe you're trying to do it on your own. No, but God's saying, no, be a man of integrity. And, and, I, and, I, and I love the fact of, of, of Joseph was a man of integrity. And God wants us to be a man of integrity. You know, he's saying, listen, if you're a man of integrity, you're going to do what's right when no one's looking. You're going to do what's right when no one's looking. It's, it's character. Not only was Joseph a man of integrity, but he was a man of mercy. Right, guys, you know what? 
I de- we all deal with anger. We all, we all are impatient. We all deal with pride. But the Bible says that, that Joseph was willing, right, to humiliate himself or disgrace himself, right, by showing mercy to Mary when he found out that she was pregnant with Jesus from God. He, can you imagine the shame, right? Can you imagine the, the talks? Can you imagine that? And they had a word from God. Sometimes you got to realize that you stand up for God. Like, people might not understand why are you so on fire for God. But maybe people don't even know you're on fire for God because maybe there's no, you need to relight the fire. Right, and so I love that that he was a man of mercy. Like he said, I'm going to do the. I'm not only going to be integral, but I'm going I'm to have mercy. I'm going I'm to show kindness. And then the last one is this: he was willing to obey God. What does that mean? He was willing to say, "Okay, God, I'm going to take this woman. I'm going to raise this kid as my quote unquote stepson. I'm adopt him for 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 the purpose and the call that you have." on his life, and I'm going to love this woman, and I'm going to train him up, and so what, he, will, he obeyed the call of God on his life. So man, what about us? What can we learn from Joseph today? What's some lessons today? Here's just some practical lessons that I, that I see in the life of Joseph, right? And number one is integrity always matters. Integrity always matters. Integrity is simply doing what you promised you would do. Integrity is doing what you promise you. Integrity is being who you are when no one's looking, right? Integrity is accepting blame when you made a mistake. Integrity is doing, is, integrity is keeping your word. You know, men and women, we are a society, we don't keep our word anymore. We don't keep our word anymore. Like, our word means nothing. When the Bible says that in, 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 in the Psalms that we should keep our word even if it hurts. If you say you're going to do something, then you need to follow through with it. Or you better, you better explain yourself and, and, and humble yourself and not just say, oh, I forgot, or make some lie. Right? That's not integrity to lie because you didn't keep your word or something else better came up. That happens in our society. It's happened like the lies in our government, the lies in this. I mean, in the people, the lies in the church. That's not integrity. Men, we need to kind of step up and, and, and watch what we do that, right? Another thing is that men need to learn, and Joseph realized this, that Joseph was a very successful craftsman. He wasn't, quote, unquote, a carpenter. He was a stonemason, right? Because they didn't have a lot of wood in Israel. They don't have a lot of wood. They built, they built uh, uh, homes with stone and brick, right? There's lots of uh, situations with there. Jesus was actually, it's really... But we call, he was called a carpenter, and they did some woodwork, but they did more stonework, because that's why he's called the chief cornerstone. I can't go into all of that. But Jesus was trained by Joseph, to be, and he was called the chief cornerstone, right? Jesus wants to build your house brick by brick. And so Joseph really had, he had, he was very wealthy. You, I, I can't explain that all right for a, a sake of time, because his parents were actually in charge of, let's just say, uh, like in Washington, D.C., we, we have the building of uh, archives. His parents were over, right, the archives of all of the country. All right, can't go into that. Just trust me there. We can talk about it later if that interests you. Joseph realized that money won't fix everything. He's going to trust God. He's going to get on his horse and that donkey, and he's going to go. And guess what? Man, we need to know that money won't fix it. Why are you chasing more money? When you should be chasing the pursuit and the plan of God. Because when you put God first, he will add all these things to your life. But we try to say, money, money, we need it, we need it, we need a 401k. Guess what? You know what could happen in, in a, if, if, if the, the same administration or administration, whatever administration wants to come in, all of our, uh, uh, what's happening right now, I know, my, I know what's happening in my investments. Right now, it's tanking. Well, I'm either putting my money and my, my faith in my investments all right? You know what I'm saying? We don't know what's going to happen. But guess what? God will never tank because he's Jehovah Jireh. He's my provider no matter what happens. So we don't put your faith in money. Third thing is, man, learn to laugh at yourself. Come on. Guys, learn to laugh. Don't take yourself so seriously. Right? Laugh at yourself. I say like this because I'll never run out of material. I like to tell myself. I, I laugh at myself because I never run out of material. Like my daughters, right? We, you guys know Father's Day, all I want to do is just go get a Whopper, right? 
And like, I, Kim, you don't get to cook. Let's, Dad, you want to go to Burger King? I want a burger. I want to have it my way, right? Right? I, I, I want to have, have it my way, right? You remember the song? Have it your way. Have it your way at Burger King. Okay, anyway, right? Go back and Google that. All right, go YouTube it. And so, so it was like, hey, really? Yeah, I don't like Whoppers. Okay, so I'm on this health kick now, so we're going to Jimmy John's today. All right, we're going to Jimmy John's. I'm going to get me a Big Beto, number five, man, extra with hot peppers. Woo, let's go. All right, so my kids, they, we, we, they, they laugh at me, I laugh at them. Because guess what? Who's perfect? Hey, just own it, right? Next thing is this. Hey, guys, Joseph encouraged Jesus along the way. A little encouragement goes a long way. Hey. I, I, I'm so intense, I'm so kind of, like, I want everything right. I, if something doesn't go wrong at church, I'm like, oh, my God, it's a, what, what are people going to think? And, and, and I learned just to chill out. I'm learning to chill out, right? And, and I'm, I'm learning to, 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 not, to not pressurize everything, right? And I'm learning that, uh, and I've learned over the years just to be an encourager, like, to encourage people. Everybody's doing their best, right? I'm trying to do, we're all trying to do our best. Encourage, because encouragement goes a long way. Right, it'll, it'll go, husbands, you know, it'll go a long way with your wives when you encourage her or thank her for stuff that she's doing today, right? Right, same way women, right? Don't always have to be harping on your husband. Don't have to be telling him everything he's got to do and turn here to put the blinker on and like, did you figure that out? Like, like okay, hey, right? Hey, it's both ways, but encouragement, 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 all right? All right, that's, that's another. And then last one, you got to have kingdom friends. We make each other better. It's good. I have friends that, that aren't Christians. I have, uh, I have friends that, that don't serve the Lord. But I can't make that the majority of my, my life. Maybe some of you are struggling in your faith because your friends are not kingdom friends. They're friends of, in a sense, if, they're, if, if you haven't led them to Christ, guess what? They're in the world. They're lost. Hello? And a lost person can't add value to you. You need to be a light. You need to tell your friends there's a Jesus. And so if you're trying to, trying to grow in your life and you don't have Christ first, guess what? You're struggling because it's your own fault. Hello? You got to put seek first the kingdom, and that includes kingdom friends. And so you got to take advantage of what God has for you, all right? Hey, there's more into this. Listen to the first message, all right? But guys, this is where we are at the end of the day. God just wants us, every one of us, but guys in particular, to have a heart after him. To have a heart after God. Listen to this in Acts uh, 13, 22. God raised up David, like King David, the little boy. Remember the little shepherd boy who became a king? Right, the little shepherd boy who was, had to watch sheep. Right, he couldn't go out to fight. Right, but while he was watching sheep, he learned how to kill a lion. Next thing, he learned how to kill a bear. So when a, when a, when a, when a giant came to him, he had already had successes. That, that's a part of growth in that. This little shepherd boy, all right, God called him to be king, right? This, and so God said, I raised up David to be king, for God s- said, I have found this David, a son of Jesse, a man who two, does two things, pursues my heart, has a heart after me, and will accomplish what I've destined him to be. God is looking for you men to have a heart after him so you can accomplish his destiny. You can accomplish his purpose. Now, here's the thing in the middle of it. David got lax. David got complacent. David kind of kind of like, hey, everything's going really good. I'm the king. And, you know, and, and back then there was, it, it wasn't God's plan, but the polygamy was kind of, you know, this king for this alliance. And David just got, went away from the Psalms they read in the Bible. And he sinned, and he had, he had adultery. He, 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 he should have been out to war, but guess what he was? He was at the wrong, he was watching too much on the screen. And he should have been out, but he was out. When he should have been to war, he was on social media, on his phone, and he, guess what? He saw a woman. And he said, I'm going to have, I'm gonna have he, he commanded that woman to come to him. She would have been dead if she would have denied the king. So she had no choice in it. And she, they committed adultery. And yet that adultery led to pain, right? And he tried to cover it up and, 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 and had her husband killed. You know what he did? Psalm 51, I can't go speed tracking this story. 
He said, God, forgive me. I am guilty. I repent. I give. And you know what? That heart is there. So I don't care where you are, men, women. If you keep your heart pure. Now, David had to make some changes, and he made some changes, but he also had to deal with the pain. And so, man, I'm asking you, right, to have a heart after God, right? If this message, you are men, it's time for men to rise up. I mean, and listen, they need men. Women need us to lead, right? It's all this crap when all this transgender stuff is happening, and girls, boys don't want to be boys anymore. Like, it's the spirit of it. It's, it's a lie. And so Christian men, men of God, fathers, we got to raise up our sons. You realize that. And it starts in the church. And if you don't like that, then maybe go to a church that's okay with not having young boys be men. All right? I'm serious. Like, we need to rise up. And so God's looking for some men, right, to say, I'm going to have a heart up to God. Yeah, you might be in the midst of adultery right now. You might be struggling and have an addiction and a drug addiction. And maybe, that, man, your life is, guess what? God loves you. And, and, and it takes one, it takes one, one little simple, Father, I repent. Change the way I think. Forgive me. Boom. And, and God wipes it out. Now you got to deal, you got to grow, you got you to continue to press on. God's a good, good God. He's a good, good Father. So, man, this is what I want to do. I, wa- I, I want to pray for you. But if you, only if you're serious about, hey, God, I need your help. No condemnation. I just trust in, I just trust in you. He's like, God, uh, listen, I did this. The past is in the past. Today's a new day. It's a new beginning. If you heard, if you were here Thursday night when I preached on new beginnings, his mercy is new to us morning by morning. And guess what? Today's Sunday, but guess what? Tomorrow's Monday. And so today doesn't have to be the same as tomorrow. And guess what? After tomorrow, Monday becomes Tuesday. And Tuesday, so listen, there's a new day every day. And then a new week and a new month and a new year. So man. Can I pray for you? If you're saying, hey, God, here I am. I'm asking for your grace. Would you stand up with me, man? Come on, stand up. If you're saying, God, man, I'm ready. Man, women, you stay down, right? You just pray, right, man? Close your eyes, man. Lift your hands up towards heaven right now. I'm not asking you to come down. Come on, man, right now. I'm, I'm declaring a blessing over you. Father, I thank you for these men. I pray the grace of God, the anointing of God. I pray the favor of God on these men. Come on, man, say what say, Father God. I give you my whole heart. I seek first your kingdom. Lord, help me. God, I need your help. Lord, I say I'm sorry. Lord, show me the way. I repent. I change the way I think. I ask for forgiveness. Thank you for forgiving me. Give me the power of the Holy Spirit to live as the man of God. That you've called me to be. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your healing. I trust in you. I'm a champion. I'm an overcomer. I'm more than a conqueror. Because of your love for me. Come on all you men. Let's give God a big old hand clap. Amen.